another beautiful day in Southwest Michigan. I'm Kathy Zerler with Deborah Basham, who is the production advisor for our virtual yoga sessions. So she, I can see her in the corner of the camera. I don't think you can, but let's all know that there's not a single one of us anywhere that does anything alone. No person is an island, as John Dunn once said, although he said no man is an island. Well, no woman is an island either. So as we begin in rest pose, let's lie down in whatever rest pose it is you like. I like corpse pose, which is completely stretched out flat on the mat. But you might like reclining cobbler with the soles of your feet together. Or perhaps you have an issue with your low back and you might want to bend your knees and let your knees fall together so you're not holding up the weight of your legs. Or any other pose that feels better to you. You are your own best teacher. Notice what you need and make space in your life for what you need. Let's make space now within our bodies by bringing both arms up overhead behind you on the mat and point the feet so that you can lengthen, widen the fingers, feel the length from within. Feel the space between the vertebrae, the space all around the organs. And then soften. Let your feet be naturally open. Let your arms relax. And breathe. And notice. One more time, lengthen, point the feet, widen the fingers. Feel alignment from the toes through the fingertips, that your head is lined up with your neck and shoulders, that your spine running all the way down to your tailbone is in line as much as possible. And there is a curve in our spines, but make yourself tall even if you're on the floor. Notice the legs coming straight out of the hips, the knees, it's all connected. The knee bones connected to the ankle bone, all of that fun stuff that we learned as kids is true. Soften again and bring your arms back next to your body and roll back your shoulders. So you are squarely on the mat, grounded. Your shoulders are holding the weight the back of your head is supported by your mat. Your arms are by your sides. Your low core is relaxed. Your legs are relaxed. Take a moment now to notice how does your body feel? How might you attend to it? with tender, loving care. Most of us would do this automatically with a baby or a puppy or a kitten or a dog or a cat or a child. But do we do it for ourselves? And that's where it all starts. Taking good care of ourselves. Breathe deeply, inhaling and exhaling through your nose if you're able to. And use this calming breath anytime you need it. 
It's always with you. Your breath is breath of life. It goes wherever you are. Let's begin softly breathing normally, turning our heads from side to side in a nice flow. Left to right, just kissing your range of motion, but not going really into it at all, just going up to it. And then go to one side and hold it there. Move in gently and mindfully to your range of motion. Breathe back to center and turn the opposite direction. Hold it here and breathe into the flexion of your neck. Breathe back to center. Check your shoulders and lift your arms up off the floor, both together. So I have one arm up here, just off the mat so that you're holding up the weight of both arms and engage the low belly. So the girdle that's at the low core area, that is the area that protects the low back and everything else when we lift. And so engage that right now while we're not lifting a heavy weight so that when a heavier weight comes into something that we need to, to do or lift, or move, we will do it safely. And we can pull it in. And use that muscle, that core strength that we speak so often about in fitness to help us stay safe as we lift and move and go through our lives with as much safety as we're able to give ourselves. And now, all at once, Drop both arms and let everything else go too. Let everything go. Feel the release. Feel the smile that comes on your face as you release. And take a long, slow breath. Lift up both arms again. Engage the core. Hold it up, squeeze it all together in the low core. Breathe and notice. Soften and breathe. All at once, let everything go, drop it, let it all go. Soften and let go. Bend the knees now. Bring the legs up close, one hand behind each knee for bends over flexion, and roll on your back giving yourself a back massage. And make big circles with your knees coming back so that your back is on flat back on the mat, but you're still massaging it by making circles with your knees. Bring those knees in close and extend one leg and put the other leg up in the air. Roll back your shoulders, arms on the mat for stability. The knee is soft. 
As we begin, tuck the belly, engage the core, all the muscles that run horizontally across your torso. So with the belly engaged and the arms on the mat for stability, point and slowly lower the leg almost to the floor. And when you get almost to the floor, flex your foot and bring it back up just as slowly. Pointing it down and flexing up, moving slowly at your own pace. Keeping your mind's eye on the weight and how it feels on all the parts of your body that are assisting in the weight lifting of the heavier leg. And the next time you come close to the mat, release the leg and let everything go. All at once, everything goes. The resting part of this practice is just as important as the tensing, the flexing, the moving, the balance, all the things that take more energy than just releasing. So there is the energy and the tension combined with the release, the letting go, that helps us heal. Bend the other knee and bring that leg up in the air. Again, engage the low core as you point and slowly lower almost to the mat. And when you get almost to the mat, flex and bring it up. So on the flex, maybe you notice this the first time, the backs of your legs are more engaged. On the point, it's the tops of your legs, the front of your legs. And so as you point down and flex up, the ankle is working, it's all connected. The muscles in the leg on both sides are working. The core is working. Your entire torso is the core. It's all working together. Everything is connected. And so we need to do as much as we can to move. And the next time you come close to the mat, let go, let the leg go down. But we need to make as much of an effort as we are able to, to move our bodies in a mindful, conscious way to engage as many body parts as possible. And we do that in a yoga practice. It does not occur in activity. So know that. Know that the overall stretching practice of yoga is essential to our well-being. Bend the knees now. Roll onto one side and use your elbow and your other hand to press up to a seated position. And let's come up to the table, to all fours. Neck is lined up with the spine, so you're looking at your mat. Knees are straight down from the hips, arms are straight down from the shoulders. Let's begin the cat table cow. So tuck and arch for the cat. Release everything to the table again. Sway into the cow, bringing up your head arching your belly toward the mat. Come back to the table. Arch up into the cat. Come back to the table. Sway into the cow. Come back to the table. To the cow. Driving the cat. And then we're going to end with the next cow. Sway into the cow. And stretch out on the mat. So we were laying on our backs a moment ago. Now we're coming into a plank. And then we're going to lie down. And take a moment. Turn your head from 
to one side and rest your head on your hands. Let go. Bring up your head and turn it the other way, resting on your hands. Come back up. Push up to Sphinx pose. So notice the resting there was pretty fast. It's a skill, but you can learn to let go almost instantly with practice. So in the Sphinx pose, looking straight ahead, feel the back arch. Knees are on the mat. Lift up the toes. Lift the feet up off the floor. And so you get a little bit more arch. And hold it here. Looking straight ahead. Come down now and lift up your arms. Elbows are bent, your arms are close to your sides. And then lift up your legs in a modified Superman. This in yoga is called canoe. So you can kind of see the canoe shape that you're creating. And come back down. Press up, back to the table, find your table, find your center, find alignment, and then slide one leg back and put the foot on the floor. Lift that leg up if you'd like to. We're going into sunbird. Hands can stay on the mat or lift up the opposite arm. So there's an extension with one arm and the opposite leg. And the other arm and leg are holding the weight. Find your alignment and press through the extensions. Breathe in, breathe out, and then come out of the pose. Come back to the table, center, and slide the other leg back. Once again, you have an option. The leg can stay on the mat, or you can lift it up. The hands can stay on the mat or you can extend the opposite arm and reach for it. Reach for it. Extending to the extensions. Come back to the table. Other side, do the parts that work for you. Find your center, balance weightlifting, mindful movement and holding, all parts engage, spirit, mind, and body, working all the muscles in this session that we have together. Return to the table. Last time, other leg and opposite arm. Hold it here. Press extend and breathe stay still from within come back to the table <sighs> curl under your toes for the downward dog move your hands and feet to the edges of the width of your mat and press up to the upside down v and find your edge <sighs> Head is hanging between the arms. Whenever we are in an inversion and we have a chance to let go of the weight of our head, let's take that advantage. Let's take that opportunity to strengthen and lengthen our necks just by the tension, the traction that we're giving them. Walk your hands and feet together, forward bend. Tucking the chin, roll up, pull in the belly, coming up slowly, lining up like you're unrolling a coil, and you actually are with the spinal column. Shoulders roll back. Roll your shoulders back again. Come into alignment. Sweep the arms up overhead, extended mountain, and lengthen. Lift up the toes, widen the fingers, stay here. Soften here, release the arms. 
Sway from side to side, nice and slow. Coming back to center. Let's do a forward bend. Elbows in, bend the knees and sit way back. You want the knees above the feet. Fold in half, touch the mat and hang out. Shake your head yes. Again, letting your head hang, stimulating crystals in the back of your head. Perhaps releasing them if they're clustered together or just giving them some motion so that they can do their jobs of keeping you balanced. Tuck the chin, pulling the belly as you roll up, thinking about everything all together, rolling up slowly, inside and out, rolling back your shoulders, softening into the mountain and sweeping up into the extended mountain, lift it up. Lengthen, lift up the toes, widen the fingers, bring your chin back, soften right here, and release. And let's bring our hands behind us, and then fold in half for humble warrior, and let our arms go as far as they want to go up toward the ceiling, and your head can bow forward, so you're bowing and reaching for something more. You are a humble warrior in a very peaceful way. Let go a little more. See if you can get a little bit more forward bend. Being mindful of the shoulders and everything that is involved in this position for you. Release the hands and come back and hang out. Shake your head yes. Tucking the chin, pull in the belly, and slowly roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae. The chin tuck helps to alleviate any lightheadedness. And as you come up, notice the blood flowing from your brain to your heart, and your shoulders roll back. And you're in alignment in the mountain as you sweep up to the extended mountain and return to an extended alignment. There's so much more around us in every pose as we move and clean the air around us. Move the air, swivel from side to side. Come to center, release the arms and swivel from side to side, loosening and lengthening. Coming back to the mountain, humble warrior. Fold to flat back, bring your arms behind you and then continue to fold forward, humble warrior. I've always thought of this pose as a wonderful place to say a prayer. Shake your head yes. Release the arms. Slowly roll up, tucking the chin, pulling in the belly, stacking the spine. Always coming up with mindfulness in and out of every pose. Shoulders roll back. Arms up, lift up, lengthen, soften, release. Hands on the waist, widen your stance, soften your knees and twist to one side, looking over that shoulder, feeling the spine, the neck, the shoulders all flexing together. Come back to the table, to the table. Come back to center, the table is center. This is standing in the mountain of center. Twist the other way. Look over the other shoulder, feel that wonderful flex, that rotation, opening up space around your organs. Come back to center. 
twist the other direction. Up to your edge in every pose, wherever that is. And if you're in a yin class, and let's come back to center and go the other way, then when you are holding a yin pose, which is a static stretch, then you can soften just below your edge and hold it for a, big, a greater length of time, still getting the benefits, but not driving the edge so much. Come back to center. Release, step together, keep your arms up, and fold your hands, you can't really see me here, fold your hands into a prayer pose up above you, and then look up and arch your back. Bring up your head and come down into prayer pose. Bow your heads. Come back up. Lift the arms up. Windmill breathing as you release that moment that you had just then for yourself of your goodness and clarity and good thoughts and things that you can share, whatever it is you thought about, whatever it is you have that is good to share. Inhale, bring it in, and exhale, release it. Thich Nhat Khan like to say, I inhale and I smile. I exhale and I smile. Take in the smile and then release the smile to other people. Coming back to center now, soften in, and we are going to do the tripod. So step out, one leg, two legs, your hands together are the third leg of the tripod. Fold in half and let your hands go in front of you on the mat. And important here is to have your head hanging between your arms. Walk both hands over to the right foot. Left hand on the mat. Right arm up in the air and look up. Look down. Right arm down. Walk back to center. Both hands to the left foot. Right hand on the mat. Left arm up in the air, look up. Look down, right, left arm down. Walk back to center. To the right foot, left hand on the mat. Right arm up in the air, look up. Look down, right arm down. Walk back to center. To the left, right hand on the mat. Left arm up in the air, look up. Look down. Come down, come back to center, and roll up. Bone by bone, again, tucking the chin because that helps as the blood is flowing from your brain to your heart. The chin tuck just helps you get up safely without becoming even a little bit dizzy. So, you may see that we have Happy Baby who has joined us on the mat and actually is sitting exactly right in the middle of my mats my crossed mats, but we're going to work around her because isn't that life? We're going to work around this little dog. So turn one foot, point one foot, sink the back heel for stability, standing tall, bring your arms out to parallel and swivel toward the forward arm. Now your legs are straight. We're going into the warrior sequence that those of you who have been with me for a while, know this, so we're going into that peaceful warrior sequence. Bring the forward arm up and the posterior arm down the back of that leg as you look up and soften the posterior shoulder. Look up and breathe. Bring up the head, come back to balance, back to center, and sink the forward knee. Bring the forward arm on top of that knee and the, uh, the thigh and the other arm up overhead. 
side angle pose. Hold it here. Come back up. Find your center. Forward knee is bent. Bring both arms together in the front. Strong fist. And pull. Like you're shooting a bow and arrow with a lot of tension. And then at your mouth, like an archer, release it, bring it back. Hold it here. Again, both arms together in the front. Strong fists. And shoot the bow, bring it back. Slower is better. And release. Hold it here. One more time. Both arms together in the front. Strong fists. And pull, bring it back. Slow. And then release. Hold it here. Bring both arms together in the front, palms facing each other. Lift your arms up overhead, arch your back and look up. Ah, oh, feels so good. Bring up your head, lower the arms, come back to center to the five point star and release the arms and step together. And if you have a dog in front of you, you can go right down loosely and pet the dog or just move in any way you want to release your body from the warrior pose and the tension of that. So tense and release, tense and release. It's the tension plus the release that helps us heal. And in yoga, we always do both sides. So let's step out again to do the warrior pose, the warrior sequence in the opposite direction. So turn the other leg so that that toe is pointing, sink the back heel for stability. Bring the arms out to parallel and swivel your hips toward the forward arm. Hold your balance here. Legs are straight. Bring the forward arm up and the other arm down the back of the back leg as you soften that back shoulder and look up. Bring up your head, come back to center. Sink the forward knee, side angle pose, and come up into a stretch with the upper shoulder. Stasis in your body. And hold and breathe. Come back up nice and slow. Keep the forward knee bent. Swivel your hips toward the forward arm. Bring both arms together in the front. Strong fists and shoot the bow. Nice and slow. Straight spine. Release the arrow toward your goal. Imaginary arrow. Focusing on the goal. Bring your arms back together. Strong fists and shoot the bow, bring it back. Slow and let it go. Hold it here. Again, both arms together in the front, strong fists and shoot the bow. Slower is better. Let it come back and release, hold it here. Both arms together in the front, palms facing each other, arms up overhead, arch your back, look up. Bring up your head, lower the arms, come back to center, to the five point star and energize it, everything below the neck, energize, squeeze, extend, release, all at once, step together. Pull your shoulders. Find your posture, find your edge. Bring your hands behind you again and lift them back just a little bit away. This is something that we probably need to do a couple times every day because we're so often leaning forward. This brings our shoulders back. 
So a lot of the work that we've already done in this session is doing that. It's releasing now and rolling back your shoulders. It's getting us to come into good posture. And I will say to you, if we were in the studio at the Y, I would have you go up against the mirror and have the back of your head and your shoulders and your buttocks and your heels and everything in line up against the mirror. And then I would have you take a giant step away from the mirror and look at your posture and you would see that it looks good. You would see that it looks right, but it probably doesn't feel right because we don't stand that way most of the time. So I would challenge you to do some posture work with a mirror. Stand with your back, your glutes, your shoulders, everything that you can have touching the mirror, touching the mirror. And that is good alignment, which is the single best thing we can all do for a healthy spine. The single best thing we can all do for a healthy spine is stand up tall. It's not invasive, it's natural, it's recommended by all the biggies, Johns Hopkins, Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, all the people that do the research, Harvard Institute. So do it, it's you, stand up straight. So now, because I have a dog on my mat, I think I'm gonna take the opportunity to let, have us all go into our second downward dog of the day. So bend your knees and walk out into the downward facing dog. Hands and knees, hands and feet are at the edges of the width of your mat, and your head is hanging between your arms, and you are in down dog. Press your hips back. Feel the length in your spine. Let your head hang. Feel the release for your neck. Step one foot to the center back of your mat and lift up the other leg so that you're in a tripod downward dog and bend that knee that's up in the air and then swivel the ankle. A tripod downward facing dog. Bring the upper leg back next to the foot that's on the mat in the center and lift the other leg up, twist that hip and open up the knee and rotate the ankle and notice three-legged dog. Bring the upper leg back in and if let your legs still are right now back together in the center back of your mat, do your downward dog with that. The easier way is to have your feet separated at the width of your mat. This takes a little bit more hamstring stretch, a little bit more flexibility to do it with your feet together. So try that. And then come back up nice and slow. Tucking the chin, coming out of your downward dog, and into your mountain. The single best thing you can do for a healthy spine is sway from side to side. And let's do a little bit of balance work here. So I'm going to step to the wall and I'm going on to a hard tile floor that's here. I'd like you to touch the wall for stability when we do balance. So you're in the mountain, put your weight on one leg and lift up the other leg just off the mat. Holding on keeps you steady from within. And that's the goal. We all need to do a little balance work, probably many times every day, or at least maybe two or three times every day. Bring the elevated foot down and switch sides. So we try to keep it equal. We try to hold our balance, one side and then the other at about the same amount of time just again, to ensure that our body and all the cells are getting that balanced message. Come back down, do the other side. And this time you can kind of move that leg a little bit. You can 
balance in motion. You can bend the knee and turn the leg from side to side, opening up, sort of a moving tree. And then put that leg down and do the same thing on the other side. Lift up the other leg and move it around a little bit. Turning it to the side, coming to center, other side, however you want to do it, but just moving in motion and balancing while moving in motion. Come back to center. Look at your feet now. Now for this one, and you've already stabilized your mountain by holding on. Look at your feet and cross one foot over the other. And then sweep your arms up and bring them up overhead and lengthen. And when you're feeling steady, you can look up and arch your back. Hold it here. Bring your head back, release your arms, uncross, find your center again. This is a mountain also. We did the downward dog with our feet together. We're doing the mountain with our feet together now, which is more challenging than this mountain where we have more space. So when we're close together, we have less of a platform and it's more challenging for balance. So now cross the other foot over the, the first foot, whichever way you went the first time, go the other way now and bring your arms up, lift up. When you feel stable here, look up and arch your back. Breathe into this beautiful pose. Bring your head back, bring your arms down, uncross, and relax a little bit. And notice, let's release with a forward bend. Very healing, elbows in. Sit way back. Bend the knees, fold in half, hang out. Shake your head, yes. Tucking the chin, pull in the belly, and roll up, vertebrae by vertebrae. Head comes up, shoulders roll back. Sweep up your arms, lift up. Look up, arch, and rain. Bring up your head, release the arms. And let's sit down. Let's see, where am I gonna sit on the mat here, happy baby? I'm gonna come right in front of the dog that's on the mat and sit in lotus position. Bring your hands to your heart space. Take a minute as you bow your head and take a moment for yourself, asking for what you want. Breathing and noticing. Bring up your head. And put your hands on your knees and just gently, like a butterfly, move the legs up and down like a butterfly in a garden. Our gardens are beautiful right now. And here I've been for the last two summer seasons last one and this one, I've been constructing and expanding a butterfly garden in my yard. And I actually have butterflies this year. And they have been sort of in an extinct mode, not really extinct, extinct, but they have needed more milkweed, more nourishment, more of whatever it is they need that has caused them to become unstable in the past few years. Here, where I live in Southwest Michigan, um, and now hold it open, extending your center in a static pose and sit up tall. Years ago, we had, I mean, thousands of butterflies, just hundreds would be in my yard as they flew to Mexico, if they were that kind of a monarch and not all of them are, but um, they would be, there would just be so many more than there were in recent years. And they're coming back. I'm feeling like what I'm doing 
in my yard might be enticing them to come back to me and maybe they've just been somewhere else. Um, I'm not sure. But I know that working with my hands in my garden and seeing the benefits of butterflies coming has been nothing short of therapy for me. So I would assure, I would encourage you, if you're not a gardener yourself, appreciate the gardeners because they are the people that will take care of your soul, just like they take care of their gardens and Mother Earth. All right, release that. And now put the soles of your feet together. And now you have, and get on those sits bones. I want you to be able to see Happy Baby. She's right here. And fold, and fold forward and bring your hands underneath your calves and over your shins to your feet. So you're holding your feet. And then fold in half into clamshell. So clamshell or oyster shell or any of the hinged ocean shells that we have that hold things is what you're doing right now. So let the hinge that is your waist relax forward. So you are, your upper body is the top of the shell, and your low body is the other side. Relax into this. Does it feel somewhat irritating? It does to me. It probably does a little bit to you. And when we do this, we think about the oyster getting a grain of sand inside, like an itch or an urge. And it tries to get that itch out. And it does as much as it can to get that itch out. And in the process, it creates an oyster or a pearl inside the oyster shell. So if things are challenging and even somewhat irritating, working through them could produce a pearl. Come back up nice and slow and extend your feet out into seated forward bend. Just our staff pose because we're going to do a seated forward bend. Roll back your shoulders and then fold in half. Hands toward the feet, head toward the knees and soften. Roll back up nice and slow. Slow, bring your hands behind your hips and lift yourself up into a plank. So you can be sort of just holding up the weight like this, or you can make yourself into a straighter plank or arch your back and let your head come back behind you. Very slowly now, bring your head up carefully, taking care of your neck and come back down. Pull back the fleshy part, fold in half, seated forward bend, hold it here. Roll it up, shoulders roll back, hands behind the hips, lift up the weight of your body, you're using that core. Come up to a straighter plank if you'd like, and even more of a back arch with your head behind you if you'd like. This one, if you like this, is great for the sinuses. So you can feel your sinuses draining when your head comes back like this. Bring up the head carefully and come back down very carefully. Adjust, find your seat, soften and fold in half. We're always soft on the move. Roll up, head comes up, shoulders roll back. Bring your arms up overhead and lift up. Soften and release. And now from the seated position, bend one knee and put that foot on the outside of the straight leg. And then bring the other arm back behind you. The same arm that's, that's connected to the straight leg is behind you. And the other arm 
is inside of the bent knee. So now you're in the pose, sit up tall, point the foot, turn your head looking behind you, over that shoulder, feel the neck and the shoulders and the spine all flexing together. Intensify this by pulling in your guts, lifting up your chin a little, arching your back, and breathing in to everything and noticing. Soften here, come back to center, uncross, come back to staff pose, and fold in half, seated forward bend. Roll up, roll it back, bend the other knee, bring that leg on the outside of the extended leg, and bring the same arm that's on the extended leg behind you, as the other, the other arm, the same as the bent knee, the elbow is bent. And then you're looking the other direction. So look behind you, arch your back, point the foot, find your edge, and breathe. Notice and breathe. Breathe back to center, uncross. Straighten up, sits bones, seated forward bend. Roll it up. As we wind down now for this session, come into a comfortable rest pose. Whatever that is for you, just like we started, and I'm gonna tell you a story. It's about one of my theories that the world would be a better place if everyone helped one other person succeed. Because if every person in the world helped one other every person in the world, the world would be perfect. But we're not perfect. Perfection is this, you know, there's qualities to it, but we're never going to reach it. We're going to be our better selves. And so as you're practicing, which is what life is, be your better self, do the best you can. And if you fail or make a mistake, I'm told those are the best things to learn from. I don't know, they're hard. It's hard to learn from a big error but it's an opportunity for growth. And all the great minds think so. And so as we use our stumbling block blocks for stepping stones, as we view them as still on our path, moving forward, we are moving forward. If we get stuck on a stumbling block, then we're stuck. And so think about that as you go through this changing 2020 year. The year of 2020, I think, will be definitely marked in history as excruciatingly challenging for so many people in so many ways. So lie down on your backs and soften some more. And put your hands on your low belly, and let's do some diaphragmatic breathing. Filling up your low belly with air as you inhale. And then contracting those muscles as you squeeze out a little more air than you took in. Pause a moment, inhale again. 
as much oxygen as you can take in and then squeeze it out, contract the belly, expelling CO2. And let's do a couple more longer, slower breaths. When you exhale in nasal breathing and you exhale hard like this from a diaphragmatic or what I call a bellows breath, you can actually expel air and make an ocean sound in the back of your throat that really brings that air through. Much like if you were exhaling through your mouth, you would hear this big exhale, breath of fire exhale. But the nose breathing has an, a, a few more benefits than mouth breathing. So if you're able to breathe in and out through your nose, do that. And as we close, bring your hands into prayer pose. Let your thumbs rest in the center of your chest and your arms rest on your ribs. Lift up your lips and a smile. I'm inviting you now, everyone, to stay in Shavasana. It's the icing on the yoga cake. It's the opportunity to let everything integrate back into one. And so as we close, I'm going to invite you to, if you've been watching my dog, her name is Happy Baby, after a yoga pose. And she has mastered Shavasana, the art of letting go. And she is drawn to the calmness of my yoga practice. She loves to practice with Deborah and me as we practice daily together. She is drawn to the gentle voice. If there's music, she's drawn to the music that's soft and clean. The energy that we're expelling as we do yoga radiates, lightens our aura. And she is a dog. And she knows innately that life is all about love. And that, everyone, is why dogs don't live nearly long enough. Because they are on, here on earth to love. And they already know that the minute they're born, they're puppies, it's puppy love. They love and they know what they're doing. So they don't have to stick around as long as the rest of us do to learn how to love. And that's why we're all here. As we close, we say together, Namaste everybody and make it a healthier day. Thank you for being here on behalf of Deborah Basham, and me, Kathy Zerler, and Happy Baby, we bid you good day. <laughs>